president, uh, and we can start with her remarks, uh, Kathy Jones, and then I'll ask Dr. Alex Coleman, who's our public programs curator, to follow her and get us ready for the unveiling, talk about the process, and she has a couple of announcements of things happening here at the archives we want to make sure you're aware of. Let's start with uh, the League of Women Voters, Kathy. I think I get to Saturday afternoon. I was, I was looking at the clock. It's changed time zones, time again. So I want to um, say greetings to the Honorable Governor Ivy, esteemed guests and dignitaries. And the League of Women Voters is so grateful to the Alabama Department of Archives and History for educating the public about the history of Alabama, as well as telling the stories about the people of Alabama, which connects us, the past to the future. And just this last year with 2020, uh, when we're all dealing with COVID, we actually had the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, which enshrined the right of women to um, to be able to vote and participate in the political process. And we also celebrated the 55th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act, which was so important to, uh, to eliminate the Jim Crow laws, which had suppressed the rights to vote for African Americans and so many others. And it gave them finally the right to vote as well. So it's appropriate that we honor these two women who serve such an important part in the passage of both, both of these voting rights bills. And I wanted to say that these two women symbolize what it means to be a patriot. Um, they pushed and they challenged and they sacrificed to upend the status quo of all of, for Alabama and to achieve voting rights for all people. Patty Ruffner Jacobs and Amelia Boynton Robinson embodied the strength of character, determination, and sheer bravery that we should all strive to have. And they struggled to claim the right to vote and the ability to influence the political and legal process which they have been denied access to. And even in the face of personal threats, insults, and physical injury, they, they did not back down. They knew the significance of the struggle that they were, that they were working to overcome. The, um, they wanted to be able to participate in the political process, to be able to cast a ballot, to know that their vote counted. It's a fundamental right of citizenship to be able to elect the leaders who reflect your values and to be able to help shape the decisions that are made at the local, state, and federal level. And listening to the stories today, I, I, it strikes me again that these women did not just fight for themselves. They fought for their children, their grandchildren, their families, their communities. And through their victories, they created opportunities that have made the lives of all of us so much better, not just Alabama, but throughout the country. And, and today, Alabama is such, it's a lot more equitable place to be than it was then, but there's so much work that's left undone. <laughs> Democracy depends upon us to all remain constantly vigilant and to shine a light on political systems that are opaque, corrupt, or make it difficult or impossible for citizens to have their voices heard or to have their votes counted. Mothers, daughters, and grandmothers continue to step up, speak out, get involved, saying, enough, this isn't right. This isn't fair, this must change. They are seeking to, when you seek needed change, it's typically not easy. And you can see from the stories of both of these women that you get the strongest opposition from those who are in power who do not want to share the power that they have. Civic engagement, civic engagement, dedication, and perseverance like these two remarkable women demonstrated is the foundation and cornerstone of democracy. And as we honor them today and carry their examples with us, to, we help our elected leaders make better decisions and ensure that they're accountable to the people that they represent. And I would, I would be remiss 
as League of Women Voters President to ask uh, Governor Ivey and others to please call upon the senator, senators from Alabama, Shelby, and Tuberville to, to please vote for passage of the John Lewis budget. <laughs>